uh, with uh, very well versed people in, in the uh, in the industry, people that have a long track record, they understand what they talk about. And uh, I've invited to moderate Antoni Chagas, who will introduce each and every gentleman on the panel. Um, so, uh, Antonio, good luck with the moderation of the, of the panel, and uh, I'll be here to, to assist you in any shape or format that you would like. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. First of all, well, it's amazing to, to be here. Thank you so much for the organization for, for inviting me and uh, inviting to all the other guests. It's clearly, as I said, it's clearly amazing the fact that I'm uh, standing here in Algarve, in my region, uh, talking about crypto, uh, talking about mass adoption and what is going to be in the next, what is going to be the world in the next few years to come. Uh, and um, of, of course, uh, I'm not going to be alone. I'm going to be uh, with some, some invites. I'm going to talk about a little bit about crypto, about their own projects. I can start with my own. Uh, I'm into crypto since 2016. Uh, read the paper first time. I didn't really enjoy it. I uh, really believe in it, uh, but I, I believe it's pretty much like like everyone else. Uh, the second time I really read, I read, I really understood, I really comprehended. I, s I saw what was be going to be uh, really um, going to be a breakthrough in the financial world because my background is in finance, and um, I started to uh, evolve into create my own crypto community to build up. Uh, um, Podcasts and I started the podcast along with uh, three uh, three other friends in three years ago. It's called Ar Art for Cafe, which we invited uh, Portuguese. We are our podcast is in Portuguese, trying to bring po uh, crypto to the to Portugal, bringing new projects, new ideas, and clearly uh, uh, show to you what will be going to be the next next years. Uh, with me, uh, maybe I'm just going to start with my my left. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you want to call? Uh, okay, talk me? okay, talk. <laughs> João, uh, I'm going to talk to you. Okay, you can talk a little bit about, about first of all, I'm going to ask everyone to talk a little bit about themselves, uh, and then I'm going to ask each one of them about their projects. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is João. Uh, what I do? Well, I'm a crypto investor. I, in fact, today is 1st uh, April, but I quit my job yesterday uh, because I really want to just live uh, from crypto and investments. Uh, in fact, I know Bitcoin like since 2013, I read because at that time I work with Chinese market to import some things. And uh, I share with the friends, but no care. But one year ago, uh, I, I decided, no, okay, it's the first time I need to buy some crypto. And I start, I buy Ethereum and Litecoin. Then I met some guys like Shagash. <laughs> And then it uh, was an amazing travel because during this one year, uh, we create a, a also a podcast on YouTube. We make like com commodity and uh, crypto. Uh, we create a really good community in Portugal. And uh, yes, just one year, but I, I really am a fan, fan of cryptocurrency and everything you can do like DeFi. I don't know if you are aware. For me, it's incredible what you can do with your assets you can make a borrow in a seconds without give you any signature identity uh, it's amazing and the profits that you can get hello um, i'm george batista i i've been in crypto uh, first time i heard about it was like uh, i think 2012 2013. Uh, at first uh, well, I like like you. I, at first, I, I didn't really believe in it. To be fair, uh, I mean, it just um, didn't click for me at first, and I was like thinking, uh, I don't know. I mean, how can you make like money out of running something on your computer? You know, <laughs> didn't click for me. But then I started digging into it and um, learning about it more and more, and started to to learn the fundamentals of how it works. And uh, and um, and by then I started to actually see the potential that he had. And um, a few years later, uh, I started to to develop uh, projects because I'm a software engineer. So I started developing projects, and uh, my clients 
sometimes we would ask to have uh, payments in cryptocurrencies. So uh, me and, uh, and my, my business associate, uh, we started looking into what was available at the market at the time. And um, back then, the solutions were very, very poor, you know. So we, 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 we thought to ourselves, I mean, we can do something better than this. <laughs> we can do something better than what is available. Uh, and the, if we have this problem, maybe someone else has this problem. So that's when we started to develop my, my project that I have outside, which is Crypt API, uh, which is a cryptocurrency payment uh, solution, uh, which is like, uh, like Stripe for crypto, which allows anyone who has uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, uh, marketplace, anything that sells any product or service and wants to receive payments in crypto, they can do it easily um, and uh, cheaply and fast and uh, that, that's that's the basic uh, uh, that differs that uh, is the big difference between us and, and the other um, competitors uh, of course over the years there have been popping up more and more uh, similar solutions to ours but uh, we still uh, believe that uh, we are the best one <laughs> And if, we don't if you don't believe on your product, I mean, <laughs> of course. So that's basically it. Okay, from my right hand side, there is Marco. Marco is a blockchain specialist. And <laughs> 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 you're going to talk a little bit about uh, what you've been doing. All right, uh, so yeah, uh, so hi, I'm Marco Pierboom. Um, I have been working in the crypto industry since pretty much the dawn of time of the crypto industry. Um, I'm one of the few people that actually writes blockchain code, I think. Uh, there's not a lot of those around. Um, yeah, so, but um, I worked uh, on in and around Bitcoin. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Decred. Um, so I worked on that for a very long time. I'm currently on medical leave, so I'm not affiliated today. Um, but I, I work on things like uh, blockchain governance, um, Man, so timestamping on blockchains. I mean, uh, years and years um, of you know just blockchain development and blockchain uh, type projects and things that, that are surrounded with it. So um, I write code, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's living here in, Al in Algarve. And I did move to the Algarve. Oh, okay, uh, you can try uh, this. Okay, and then is Hugo. <laughs> Hello. Hugo. Okay. okay. It's yeah. Can you talk yeah. about this? Hugo is our our. Bitcoin, are you, are you finished, uh, Marco? Sure. Sure. Google <laughs> is our Bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> enthusiast. Talk a little bit about yourself. Ugo. What brought you to Bitcoin? Hello, everyone. I'm Hugo Ramos. I'm, the first time I heard about Bitcoin was in 2015. Um, I don't know if this is a bit louder than the other one, but... Um, so I took, basically, 2016 was my year of learning where I tried to learn everything about Bitcoin. And I started to invest early 2017. <laughs> Um, in the markets. Uh, there was a period of my life which I don't like to discuss very much when I also bought some shit coins. <laughs> but I am today what's known as a Bitcoin maximalist, a very toxic one, so I don't believe in any other coin except Bitcoin. Um, and I don't even talk about them, and I don't talk about NFTs. So for me, what you guys call crypto, I call Bitcoin. And there's nothing else. <coughs> so, Basically, I started as everyone else um, around 2017, and my incentive was, of course, seeing that Bitcoin was a valuable asset, which I also don't believe today it's an asset. I believe it's a currency, and it's the currency of freedom. And I was actually really, um, uh, just a few weeks ago, I came back from El Salvador, where I spent almost two months evaluating what's happening there, and so I changed my mindset over the years since 2016 to today, believing that Bitcoin is the only real coin that exists, the only decentralized coin, and the only one that allows everyone to be a free person. So I changed my mind from the um, technical analysis, which I created a podcast also about technical analysis one year ago, one year and a half uh, ago, which is FU Money podcast. I also have the Portuguese channel in the news channel, so there are three channels on YouTube with this name. Um, but over time, I've been, I came to realize that it's not about the money, it's about freedom. 
And that's what I believe today about Bitcoin. It's the only way for everyone to be um, free in a very corrupt fiat world. So this is who I am. Thank you, Google. As you see, um, even in crypto, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, subcultures, subgroups inside of it. For example, and that's the reason why I invited also Google, is because he brings the view that he's a uh, Bitcoin maximalist. He only believes in, in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only, is the only asset that he is. Okay, move well, on. I forgot to say one thing, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm oh, not just an investor of Bitcoin. I believe it as a currency, and so I also am a miner. So I forgot to mention this. I started to mine uh, in 2017 when I didn't realize that Bitcoin was the only thing for me. I was mining Ethereum recently about one year, one year and a half or two years ago. I sold all my mining operation of Ethereum and I've been mining only Bitcoin now. Okay, thank you, Hugo. Okay, I would like to also take some, some extra time just to talk with uh, George about this project. I didn't, I didn't think we thought, uh, he talked pretty much about it. I want to get, because it's a exact project he's building on in Algarve, and I don't want to, him to talk a little bit. Just five minutes if you can, okay, George? Uh, so I'd like to start off. I mean, I, I disagree <laughs> with Hugo a bit because. I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean,. <laughs> There are, for everything in life, you need the right tool for a job, and you know? And if you want to, to cut down a tree, you can cut down a tree with a hammer, if you want, but it's not the most efficient way. And it's the same with crypto. There are different cryptos which have different, um, different use cases and different uh, purposes. And w just one to, to do everything, I don't think it's the, the right approach. It's, you should choose which, whichever it's the best tool to do the job that you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, about my, my company. So we, uh, I'm living in Portimão. Uh, uh, the main development uh, is there. And uh, we are, like I said, we are a cryptocurrency payment solution. Uh, basically, we allow everyone, anyone who is selling anything to, to get paid in crypto. We have been in the market since uh, 2018. We launched early 2018. And um, so we've been on the market already for four years. Uh, and uh, it's been growing very much, especially with um, the mainstream people. We had, we approached some companies back in 2018, 2019, and they were like, uh, we don't want to hear about crypto. We don't want to deal with it. We don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Uh, and now the same company, sometimes they come to us and they say, no, now we are, we want to, uh, you guys are still in the business, we want to integrate crypto, we want to sep start accepting uh, payments in crypto, whatever. And uh, we went to a Forex, Forex um, summit in Dubai uh, a few months ago, a uh, month, month or so ago. And uh, we went uh, like uh, to another one a year ago. And back when we went there, we, we approached some uh, platforms and some brokers. And they were like, no, 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 we don't accept crypto. We don't want to deal with it, whatever. When we went this year, now we approached a lot of them and they were like, uh, yes, yes, we are looking into it. Our team is already looking into accepting crypto. Or some, some where they say, ah, we already do accept crypto. <laughs> so we can see that the, the mindset of people is changing mm -hmm. to, to accept crypto. And the crypto is losing like the myth that it had, that it was one with four uh, shady businesses and ransoms and drugs and whatever. And uh, people are starting to see the benefits that it has over uh, fiat and over all other forms of, of payments. And we are seeing that on, on our system as well because more and more uh, people are adopting the system, more and more people are um, transacting uh, like even if instead of of uh, crypto uh, of uh, credit cards they are accepting like usdt or uh, other stable coins because i mean some stable some business still don't want to bear the volatility of bitcoin or mm -hmm. or, or others but they they like the benefits of uh, crypto but also the benefits of it of not having volatility that's why Right now, I, I'd say that uh, more than half of, of the volumes is in USDT. Mm -hmm. 
So there are many, many companies who are uh, looking into accepting USDT or uh, USDC or some <coughs> other stable coins. Um, what, what else can I say about it? I don't know. I mean, just about, about your company and what you're doing and what will be the next, the next step, what decisions are you going to take? So uh, the next steps, uh, like, I, like I already, um, not here, but okay. The next steps we are going to, to implement a solution to, for integration with some exchanges to help people uh, because uh, sometimes they want to accept uh, more, more currencies but they don't, uh, they don't want to keep them, they want to, to exchange them. So we are uh, on the, in the process of integrating with some exchanges. It will start with Binance but then we will uh, open up to, to other exchanges to allow people to um, to exchange as soon as they receive the payment. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but our goal and our philosophy was always to never hold anyone's funds. So the main purpose that we do this is because it's our philosophy and because it's a security matter. And uh, the, the, the merchant should be always in control of his own coins or if he wants to put them on some exchange, it should be the exchange that they trust. They don't need to trust us. Mm -hmm. So the, um, that's why we, the, since the beginning, we never had, uh, we never held any funds. We, the, 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 um, when, when uh, for instance, when a, a website, uh, someone is checking out on, on the checkout page and they want to, to, uh, to pay with crypto with our system, an address is created for them they, they send the funds to their address and as soon as it's confirmed by the blockchain, it is uh, forward automatically to the, to the merchant's wallet. So uh, we, uh, all the funds are, are in our possession for only for like one or two or three seconds maximum. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's our difference from all the other competitors and that's what makes us, and it's what we want to do. Some, some people uh, say, ah, well, but you, can keep the funds and then maybe group the funds and like merge everything and send in one go and it was like no we don't want to hold anyone's mm -hmm. funds that's what everyone else is doing mm -hmm. we want you to have to be in control of your own funds okay. um, and this way the, the, with this this script API pro that we are developing the um, this integration they will be trusting their funds with the whatever exchange they want to to accept, so if they if they trust in Binance or if they trust in Kraken or whatever, they will ha the funds will be on their wallet on, on the exchange that they trust, not with us. They don't need to trust us. And since uh, all the funds are um, sent immediately to, mm -hmm. to, to to their wallet, they can even stop using our system. Where they have no commitment with us. So we are so sure that uh, <laughs> that people don't don't leave our system that we, they don't need to commit with us. So as soon as the payment is confirmed and they receive their money, they can switch it out from our system to someone else. But we, we are confident that they don't. And, and actually, they, we have never had anyone. Uh, we, are, we had many coming from other services similar to ours and starting using us. And we never had someone who was using us and, and went some, to someone else. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's the great thing that uh, we believe that we are on the right path, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, is, what do I give is, is a tool, a tool they can use here in, in Algar for the merchants, for they, they start to accept uh, crypto, uh, any crypto they want. But I will move the, the debate here to, let's talk about adoption here in, in Algar. How can we, I mean, you have this tool, now you have at least one company that is already working a solution for, for the merchants, but how can we build, like in an original Algar, with all the specifics that we, we have here, uh, create or uh, increase the adoption and talk, people are talking and using more, more crypto. I know, João, can you give us a, like, a, what would be like your idea when you, from your background, your perspective, you're living here in Algar, what could be like ideas, things that you could do or you, governments could do to, to increase uh, adoption? Okay, well, <coughs> I think this could, should start by the spread the word and start by the people. Like, I remember uh, last year uh, was a, a one restaurant that make a 
publicity and post. Mm -hmm. Now we accept Bitcoin and also Ethereum and like, like, like that. I think not thinking only of the gover government mm -hmm. and politicians, I think that the, the companies, the stores, or also the Portuguese com community, our, just go to the stores, I don't know, create an idea, go to the stores, hey, did you heard about Bitcoin? Did you understand how it easy you could receive these payments? I also, like like Uga already always do, hey, do you receive whatever you pay? Hey, do you receive Bitcoin? I don't know, if you speak about that, we'll stay and we can we can grow that. So, so, and they, after, after many people do it, they will start, I need to look into this. Yes, <laughs> yes, I, I think there is a story about um, Red Bull. Yes, mm -hmm. like Red Bull. Red Bull makes something like that. Uh, yeah. Ask everyone. I, I don't, that real, is a story. Real marketing. Yes, real marketing. Wow, what? Mm -hmm. We'll start. We'll yeah. start. Marco, uh, I know you don't have much experience living here. You already have some. Okay. <laughs> from, what you, from your point of view, what would be like these ideas that you could start to bring to Algarve, make our merchants start to accept crypto? What do you say? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a non-popular opinion here. Um, more than one? More, <laughs> no, but this, this one is actually goes a little bit uh, against, I guess, Portuguese culture a little bit. Um, okay. The, um, the way to attract business and the way to attract uh, developers is, is in, again, not popular, but it is by tax incentives. If you want to bring people here, what you need to do is create a tax haven for developers in the crypto space and say, hey, you know what, if you move here, uh, we are not going to tax you for this, this, and that. Um, people always fall on the money. Uh, and again, I know that a lot of people are always reacting negatively to that, but that is the actual reality of it. So if you look at the economics, if you want to create a tech hub, like mm -hmm. we are trying to do here, what the government of Portugal needs to do, what the government of the Algarve needs to do is offer incentives. Move here, get this for free. Yeah. Um, again, I know this is not a, a popular view, but, but this actually works. Yeah. So as a person who has lived in the United States for a very long time, I can tell you that, um, so I, I'm from Austin, by the way, Austin, Texas. So guess why Tesla showed up uh, mm. in Austin, Texas? Because it was offered a very good deal on its tax incentives. You know what? You move here, you don't pay taxes for 10 years. That is a huge deal, right? Because now you don't you don't pay all these, you know, in, in Portugal it has ridiculous taxes. Let's also get it out of the way. Twenty three percent IVA, that is that is absurd. That is yeah. that is absolutely unheard of in the normal world. Those are not numbers that people should be talking about. Yeah. Fifty, sixty percent of, of income tax, ridiculous. People are not going to be willing to work. The main issue in Portugal is that taxes are incredibly high. Way, 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 way too high. You want to attract people, you want to attract talents, do you want to build a vibrant community, lower your taxes, give people tax incentives, keep the people that actually are viable in your community in here. Mm -hmm. You do not want to keep the people that are living off the government, you want to bring in the people that will pay the government. So you want to have highly educated, uh, you know, people that actually provide mm -hmm. um, and again, I know this is an unpopular stance to take here in Portugal, but this is what's missing in Portugal. Yeah. Portugal did, did one thing incredibly well. So when they passed a crypto law, mm -hmm. that made a real change. So in the U.S., I, I'm talking to people every day. It's like, oh, we're going to go move to Portugal. The only reason was, oh, you get tax-free uh, crypto exchange. Yeah. So let's do the math here, people. So people mm -hmm. want to move here just based on that. Yeah. But then they get here, then there's all, this, all the other things, right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I guess my point is taxes suck. Yeah. We don't want to pay him. Yeah. Um, no okay. <laughs> Joan also wants uh, to say something. Uh, in fact, I want just to comment. Uh, I really agree with you. And we can, we have an example in Portugal. For instance, if you are retired, you come to Portugal, they don't are paying, they like have 10 years free tax. Okay, they don't pay now, but they are tri tri uh, bringing the money. We see the, 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 um, the real estate okay, is increased. They spend their money. Our uh, health system is also contributed by them. And have worked, have worked. We see uh, with this, at this moment, I think that the community from USA, it's the second one larger in Portugal. They are, because I, I have worked with uh, retired people. And uh, they are coming year by year, year by year, because they don't pay the tax for the, the retirement. 
And if, in other, in other hand, if the young people, the talent, the acknowledgement come to Portugal, okay, they don't pay for fiat cryptocurrency, but they will spend the money, the things will work. Uh, I really agree with that. I, yeah. I have to say that I actually agree with Marco and Desi as well, because I mean, <laughs> it, it wasn't a controversial uh, opinion after all. <laughs> no, but in Portugal it is. It really is. Um, there's a lot of folks that don't want to hear this, right? Yeah. But it's the truth. I mean, people and businesses go where is the most favorable environment for them. That's why Ireland economy is booming, because because they made uh, the the best environment for companies in Europe. And uh, right now, the, the crypto, the, since like Portugal right now, it's a crypto uh, tax haven. Mm -hmm. uh, people are moving here because of that. But there are already like um, some, some laws that, uh, that are, were proposed to, to, to get rid of it and to start taxing it like uh, capital gains, 28%. Yeah. I mean, okay. This is the best way they could they could do to kill this to kill whatever it's it's growing here. You know, it's the best way to to kill something is to tax it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll say that I'll just add on that that it's tax haven for if you want to spend it, but if you want to build a company here, forget it. You you're going to have a lot of difficulties. That's that's <coughs> where you're getting there. Uh, it's supposed to be. It's not. It's even. I mean, so you you're. You can't change, you don't pay taxes on, on your exchange, but I mean, you, you can't change, but if you want to create a company, if you're going to build something in crypto, you can't. So it makes, it makes perfectly no sense. So it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's not tax heaven. It's not a heaven for, for crypto. I was just, finally for Hugo, Hugo, I will add something. This, also that, if you, I want to ask you to say something about what, what your idea for mass adoption, for Bitcoin. The option, of course. <laughs> oh, I have also, an idea also but about also, taxes. But also, yeah, okay, I don't taxes too. But say something about El Salvador, because you've been there. Yeah, Is I'm there just something going in to El talk Salvador about that, yeah. that you can be applied here in Algarve? Because you don't have like a government in Algarve, right? So you don't have yeah. like mayors or something like that. Sure. So, um, as, I was, uh, as I was explaining before, as a Bitcoin maximalist, I also became very knowledgeable about economy, because one of the good things about Bitcoin is that it drives you to study economy, to understand what money is and what a currency is. And in that path of study, I um, came to realize how money is printed and, and how money becomes money. So if you think his opinion was unpopular, mine is much more. He thinks that taxes are, uh, you said, with, which was the adjective you used? Suck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> taxes suck. So I say taxes are a theft. So they are stealing the money, your value, from you. And why is that? Because the central banks can print all the money they want. Basically, if the central bank can print all the money they want, as they are doing in the United States, these days is very, it has been very popular to talk about this because the states are increasing the inflation of the dollar like crazy. And it's not through its 7%. It's really about 20 21% right now uh, because of money printing and the continuation of that policy to Europe. We are also, the European Central Bank is doing the same. So why do they need to tax you if they can print all the money they want? You should ask yourself this question. And when you really study Bitcoin and you become a libertarian like me, and for example, you go visit El Salvador for two months like I did, then you will understand many things that you don't understand if you don't leave this Portugal, European Union and the United States. That's the only thing people see here. The mainstream media is American. Uh, many things you hear comes from the States and all the directions of the money printing comes from the States and now the European Central Bank is doing the same. So if they can print all the money they want, why do they need taxes? That is stealing the money from you in two ways. First, they tax you and in Portugal, we are famous for the highest taxes, like the VAT, for example. 23% is one of the highest in the world. And they also print money like crazy. So as they don't want to tax you anymore, because that could lead to civil unrest, they print money. And that's the second way they use to steal your value, your net value. Because printing money means the money you already have 
is going to be worth much less. And you will come to realize all this when you study Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is the only solution for freedom and self-sovereignty. Because it's deflationary. It's exactly the opposite. It has a limit of printing of 21 million coins and the, um, the printing of this, the minting, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's not a bill, it's a coin. <laughs> so the minting, yeah, the minting of the coins decreases half, 50% uh, every four years, which is called the halvening in Bitcoin. So it's very famous for that. It's famous for the design of Bitcoin is made to make it more valuable over time. No, so no, I just wanted to, uh, okay. okay. So I just wanted to give this small, um, um, you know, introduction to what I was going to talk about in El Salvador. But this is really important if you study this and you see that there's lots of videos on YouTube. You can watch how the money is printed and how the governments get the money from the central banks and they create debt. And that debt is always increasing because the money is worth much less over time. So the debt is actually a spiral which will never, never end and your money will be much less valuable than it was five years ago, ten years ago. The only way to fight that, those two ways of governments and central banks stealing your money or your net value is Bitcoin. Because that, as the dollar is decreasing, Bitcoin is increasing in value. It's not just Bitcoin becoming valuable, it's also the dollar becoming less valuable that will make this balance to be, um, you know, not in balance anymore. And you will preserve your net value. Tell so, nothing. We don't need that. Bitcoin doesn't need you. You need Bitcoin. And this is this is the big difference. Looking at all the other people talking about crypto, which doesn't exist. Crypto is Bitcoin and shit coins. But in El Salvador, you had a lot of ideas or measures done by the government. Yes, the government helped, but we don't need governments helping. That's what I realized in El Salvador. This is going to happen either you like it or not, okay? Because people will realize over time with incentives that they need to preserve their net value. And the only way to do that is to be in a deflationary currency. So in El Salvador, what they decided was after watching this, uh, seeing what was happening in this Bitcoin beach project, which was started by an American, by the way, uh, and I got to know him there. Um, so he started the project and... You're pointing at me, but okay. No, because you're American, <laughs> right? I'm, so, I'm a world citizen. Yeah, exactly. Like libertarians, we are all world citizens. But this was a, an American uh, guy that uh, take, uh, took the idea of starting a different ecosystem in this small place in El Salvador, which is quite, um, called El Zonte. It's a really beautiful beach. Uh, if you know Portugal, it's very, very poor. But if you know Portugal, you could compare it to something like, you know, north of Sagres, there's a small place called Carapatera, and it's very, very similar. Dirt roads, very poor people live there and work there. And then you have really nice hotels. And the nice hotels are there because of Bitcoin, because Bitcoin developed that uh, small area. And the government of El Salvador noticed what was happening, and they decided to try to understand what that is in opposition of what they are doing in Europe right now, which they are trying to kill by any means possible your possible freedom and self-sovereignty by not allowing you to have Bitcoin in self-hosted wallets. So what, what, what they did in El Salvador was they went there, the president wanted to know what was happening, and he understood that Bitcoin was actually helping those people because it was allowing them to have a parallel economy, which was not a dollar. By the way, El Salvador is dollarized, which means the currency, the legal currency until last year, was the American dollar. So every time the American dollar goes up, in, uh, I mean the inflation of the American dollar goes up, and they start to print more dollars, El Salvador is affected. Because the inflation also gets there, it's the same currency. So he actually liked what was being done in El Zonte and decided to create the Bitcoin law which introduced Bitcoin in El Salvador as legal uh, tender. So it's like having two currencies. It's like for us, for example, to have Scudo and Euro at the same time. 
So they have Bitcoin and dollar. Two shitcoins, yeah, two shitcoins, by the way. <laughs> <coughs> so what happened was the government, what they did was they drove the, they, they tried to make it stronger, the movement make it stronger. And as it became legal tender, you don't have any way to tax Bitcoin in El Salvador because it's illegal to tax a currency. So El Salvador actually adopted the right way to do it, which was this is not an asset, this is a currency. And that's why I said before when I introduced myself that I don't believe in Bitcoin as an asset anymore. I did in 2017, but not now. Now for me, it's a currency, the currency of freedom and self-sovereignty. And that's what they are doing in El Salvador. And if in 10 years the dollar collapses, as everyone is expecting, because the world is trying to renounce it as uh, the world reserve currency, if that happens and the dollar cannot, and they cannot pay the debt, which is already 32 trillions or something like that, the dollar will collapse as we know it today. And probably they, it will adopt a different form. But if that happens, El Salvador is protected. And the people of El Salvador are protected because they have Bitcoin. So they are not being affected by the inflation rate and they will not be affected by the dollar collapsing if that will happen in the future. Thank you. Okay, so you're going to say something. Yeah, I would just like to add something to, to what you were saying. Uh, he, he, he spoke on, on two ways that the governments um, Steals. Get, get money. Steals <laughs> money from you. I, I will not go as far as steal, but uh, there, there are, I, I would just compliment, there are three ways that, because no government generates value. No government generates value. So the government <coughs> needs some, some way to, to finance itself. And there are three ways that the governments finance themselves. All three are uh, taking money from some, someone el somewhere else. So the first one is taxes. So they take money directly from people that are regenerating value. The second one is debt. They are taking money from the future to the present. They are taking debt that someone needs to pay eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> they are taking value from the future to the present. And the third one is printing money, which is taking value from everyone that holds the currency. But in, in all three ways, they are always taking value from someone that is producing that value to someone that is not producing the value. That's, that's just what I... Uh, just something else, just to add. Um, there are also... <laughs> Not only on El Salvador, but there are even more grassroots movements in Latin America, especially in uh, Venezuela and Argentina, that people themselves are, are using crypto more and more. Uh, and it's not like even government mandated. They are doing it because they don't trust the banks, they don't trust the inflation. You're making his point. Yeah, no, but it's, it's mm -hmm. true. But it, I mean, the incentive is there. Right. The, the incentive is the inflation. And in, if you but in, 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 in El Salvador, coin, yeah. and people are walking away from it. Yeah. Exactly. So El Salvador, the economy collapsed because the government's a pile of crap. Um, let's call it by its name. Uh, and the same is happening in Argentina as well. So Argentina is going to default again for and like Turkey. the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The, yeah Clearly the, inevitable in, the, in these uh, types of places. I know people in, uh, in Argentina that they. They don't have bank accounts because they don't trust the banks and sure. they don't want to, to hold a currency that is losing its, uh, its value every second. So, and they, all, all their assets are in crypto. All, all their, their money, are their wealth is in crypto and they don't even have bank accounts. By the way, I just forget to mention. Um, just a short, short comment. Yeah. Um, you can go ahead. And, and I will just uh, when I realized, I just realized it, this in when I start with crypto, and I was shocked like, because if you keep if you just keep fiat, you earn this, you pay to the government, so you will have less, and then they keep printing. Mm -hmm. So this um, money that you keep will worth less, mm -hmm. and over and over again. Exactly. What is the maximum supply of the f fiat? There is no maximum supply, and, they, and, and that is the problem. And when you speak about Peter, oh, that is a Ponzi, but how many, yeah. I, I don't remember, what was the, the percentage of the dollars printing uh, during the COVID? Was an I don't remember, it was uh, like... No, 25% of all dollars in existence were printed since 2020. Yeah, 20, can you imagine one-fourth of all the dollars that exist in the world 
were printed in the last two years. Okay. And that's why the real inflation is not 7%, as they say. The real inflation is now around 20, 21%. Okay. And the difference is Bitcoin has a limit of 21 million coins, and we are right now exactly approaching the 19 million that were already minted. Minted. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we are really close to get to 21 million, but you will not see it happening because as every four years, the minting of the coins is decreased by half. The last one to be printed will be in 2140. So this means that it will take until 2140 to get the last minted coin from the blockchain. Okay. So you will not see it, but the, the, the real principle here is that it's deflationary. So it has a limit, and everyone knows this from the start. It will be only 21 million, which from those 21 million already, almost 2 million, if I'm not mistaken, are lost already because people lost the keys or for some other reason. So they cannot be moved. It's, it, it's like if they don't exist, which makes the rest of the Bitcoins existing more valuable even. Okay. Okay, Hugo. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so just wrap up because we're already too <laughs> above the time that it was scheduled. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, George. Thank you, João. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Hugo. There is so much to talk about. As you know, I could try to bring very different ideas, very different views for crypto. Uh, what is going on is just the beginning. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>